In this video, we will continue solving triangles like these, where you have uh, parallel sides making the small triangle similar to the large triangle. We have learned about the side splitter theorem, which we will use a lot, where we can do things like 6 over 2 equals 8 over x. But yet, on problems like number 7, we must be very careful not to use the side splitter theorem for the base of the triangle right here. Uh, 4 and x, these are not split, split parts. These are whole lengths on the triangle. So 4 is um, one side of the small triangle. x is one side of the large triangle. So those are just proportional sides of the triangle. Um, now the trick on problems like this is to add in the, a number that's not showing. We need a single number to represent this side of the large triangle. 5 plus 7 is 12. So we're going to need that 12 in order to do the problem. Because when we talk about corresponding sides, um, 5 is one side of the small triangle. The corresponding side of the large triangle is not 7. That's just a piece. It's the 12 is the large triangle. So it would be the 5 and the 12. So these are the um, corresponding parts that we will use in our proportion. So for example, 5 over 12, we could put over here, you know, small triangle, big triangle and then 4 over x, small triangle, big triangle. And we cross multiply like you do. So that'll be 5x um, is equal to 48. Divide both sides by 5. nine point six alright so that's number seven like I said for number eight we will use <clears throat> the side splitter theorem this X is a part it's not a whole length on the triangle so we can use the side splitter theorem so um, we will have six over two is equal to 8 over x and cross multiply so 6x is equal to 16 divide both sides by 6 okay so that's um 2.6 repeating. Um, let's just leave it as a fraction. <clears throat> so that's 8 over 3. I guess I'll do both. Okay, obviously I rounded there, which um, always makes me a little uncomfortable. Alright, before we do problem number 9, I want to have a little conversation about parts and holes because something is going to happen in problem number nine, a little twist that um, if we don't preview it right here, I think it's going to throw some of you and be confusing. So part and hole. Um, imagine that uh, this part of the segment um, was five. And imagine that we knew that the whole length was 12. Could you figure out what the other part was going to be? Sure you could. Um, the other part must be 7. And how did you know that? Um, well, you know that 5 plus 7 will give you 12. Or you could think of it as, oh wait, we could find this by doing 12 uh, minus 5, and that would give you this missing piece. Okay, now hold that in your mind. What if instead of a 5, this was an x? OK. Now, you wouldn't be able to give me an exact number for the other side, but you could give me an expression. 
because just like we could calculate this side before when we did 12 minus 5, well now we could say, well, it'll, we, we don't know what x is, but this other part will be 12 minus x. Okay, and so that's what you could put as your expression right here. We have x, and then over here, this will be uh, 12 minus x. All right, so let's just practice that because this shows up very often in many types of problems. Okay, so when you have a part and a whole, I want you to be able to do this automatically. All right, so let's say, um, let's say if we knew that the whole thing was whatever, um, 15. Um, what if I know that this over here is going to be n? Can you give me an expression for the yellow part over here? Yeah, it'll be 15 minus n, all right? It'll be the whole minus the other part over there, okay? Let's do that one more time. Just want to make sure you have it all nailed down, okay? What if you know that the whole thing is, um, I'll say, 13 point two okay and what if I told you that the yellow part here was P can you give me an expression for the blue part yeah the blue part would well think say it out loud what am I gonna put for the blue part say it alright hopefully you said 13 point two minus P would be the other part Okay, do you have that down? All right, let me throw one more twist on it. Okay, what if I gave you um, the whole thing as the variable? All right, what if I told you that um, an expression for the entire length is going to be x? Okay, and uh, now let's say if I told you that um, this part was, say, 7. Could you give me an expression for the other part? Okay, did you say x minus 7? All right, because just like before, it'll be the whole minus the part that you already have. All right, let's do that one more time and then we'll go on to problem number 9. I really want you to answer this out loud, okay? All right, just no, nobody's listening. It's just you and me here in the headphones in your room, wherever you are. Do it. Okay, so um, let's say, let's say this entire length here is k. Okay, and um, let's say that we know that this over here is 13. Can you give me an expression for the yellow side over here? Say it out loud. Be, be bold. I want to see you be brave. Okay, hopefully you said this is going to be k minus 13 for the other part. All right, so we'll need that skill in problem number nine. Here we go. All right, here comes problem number nine. So um, let's see where this variable is. Okay, so our variable is an entire length of the large triangle. So um, we're not going to use the side splitter theorem this time. We're going to use good old um, similar triangle corresponding sides. Uh, but we will need to add in a number here. See the 5 and the 9? Those are just pieces. 9 is um, one side of the smaller triangle, but we're going to need the corresponding side of the large triangle. So let's just draw that in ourselves. So 5 plus 9 is 14. We're going to need that 14. So when we go to do our corresponding sides, one of the things we like to do is uh, right away look for corresponding sides where you have both numbers. So 9 is um, one side of the smaller triangle here. Now the corresponding side of the large triangle is the 14, the whole thing. So when I go to set up my proportion, um, on one side I will have 9 
over 14. Small triangle over large triangle. So now let's make another proportion, I mean, you know, another fraction involving the variable. All right, so this x is one side of the large triangle. Okay, um, what is the corresponding side of the smaller triangle? Well, whoa, slow down. Okay, I'm seeing that um, this right here, where I just put this question mark, this would have been the corresponding side on the small triangle. So I'm so bummed that we don't, uh, we don't have this number. So here's what we have to do. Um, we have to make this um, extra expression right here. If the, uh, if the whole uh, triangle, if this side of the triangle is x, the whole thing, and this is 4, then what you can do is say um, this missing part will be x minus 4. You can just subtract. It would be the whole thing minus the part over here. So this is what we're going to have to use when we set up this fraction, okay? So that was an extra little trick right there. So I feel like we should practice that again in a moment. Um, so we're going to go, um, so we're doing small triangle over big triangle. So the small triangle here, we have x minus 4, and the large triangle, we have x. Okay, so let's go ahead and cross multiply, but um, I'm going to come back and, and practice this little um, step that we did. So as I cross multiply, uh, here I'm going to have 9 times x is just 9x. Okay, but over here I've got 14 times x minus 4. So I'm going to have to do the distributive property. So this will be 9x, all right, 14 times x is 14x. Now 14 times 4, is 56. All right, see how we have variables on both sides? You should get those together by subtracting 14x from both sides. Okay, um, so this is going to be negative 5. So negative 5x is equal to negative 56. And then we will divide both sides by negative 5. So that is 11.2. All right, so that is how you do number 9. Okay, so on number 10, can we use the side splitter theorem on this one, or do we need to use good old fashioned corresponding sides of similar triangles and do like 3 over 14? Now we can do the new side splitter theorem on this one. These are both split sides, so I can do x over 12 is equal to 3 over 11. Okay? You just can't use the side splitter theorem when you're dealing with the bases, all right? But these are split sides, so it's all good. So when I cross multiply, I will have 11x is equal to 36. And then I will divide both sides by 11. Okay, wow, that's a crazy number. Um, so we could just leave our answer like this, 36 over 11, because that definitely does not reduce. Um, or we will have to round. So 
just be prepared. So this would be 32.27, uh, I'll say. Uh, what did I say? No, <laughs> did I say 32? 3.27. Okay, but it always makes me a little uncomfortable when I round. So that's it for number 10. So this will be the last problem. All right, it's a little bit interesting. It's got a couple uh, interesting twists to it. I like that. So the first thing is, looking at where the x is, will we be allowed to use the side splitter theorem? Or do we need to use good old-fashioned corresponding sides of similar triangles? We cannot use the side splitter theorem. This x is not part of a split side. It's a whole side of the large triangle. And uh, so these are going to be corresponding sides of similar triangles, old fashioned. Now, so we'll have to be careful about how we find our other corresponding parts. Um, let's see. I look at the 13, all right, that's a nice uh, side of the large triangle, but then that would be corresponding, um, hold on, let me use a different color. Um, so if I wanted to try to use the 13, say, all right, that's uh, this side of the large triangle corresponds with TS right here, but I don't know it, and I have no way of finding it, so that's not going to help me. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, I see the 7, but that's not, that's just a part. So that's not a side of a triangle, so that 7 is not helping me. And then I see the 12. Now the 12 is looking good, all right. Um, 12 is the side, one of the sides of the large triangle. So I would just need the corresponding side of the small triangle. That would be this right here, RS. Okay, and at first that looks like a problem because um, just like over here, when we couldn't find TS to go with the 13, we don't have RS, but because we have the 7, uh, we can look at the 7 and the 12 and figure out what the R must be. Um, how? How can I find RS comparing the 7 and the 12? Well, hope, hopefully you're thinking about subtraction, all right? Um, 12 minus 7, all right? These two have to obviously add up to 12. So 7 plus 5 is 12. Or you could think 12 minus 7 uh, leaves 5 left over. So this is 5. So these will be the corresponding sides, and we'll have to use that 5. So that was a clever trick. Okay, so now we can set up our corresponding sides. So for example, um, small triangle over big triangle, I can put that on one side. So I could do 5 over 12. Okay, and then small triangle over big triangle, that would be 7 over x. And you cross multiply, so that'll be 5x. Um, is equal to a4 divide both sides by 5 that's 16.8 all right so that is it for number 11 and uh, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found it to be helpful, and I will see you on the next video.